Hi everyone, I'm Carl from the Cedro Alto Coffee Farmers Collective. This is episode 4 of Coffee Economics with Carl. This is the second in a three-episode series on currencies and exchange rates, still talking about transparency in the coffee supply chain. In this one, we're going to look at how producers are affected by a variable exchange rate and how roasters may want to keep this in mind when reaching long-term agreements with them. Moving on, let's take a look at this applied example of uh, the implication of exchange rate in a coffee supply chain uh, with a fixed differential price. So let's take a hypothetical supply chain in which a green coffee importer was willing to purchase a certain green coffee at a uh, plus 40 differential. So that's the C price plus 40 cents. So we're going to take a look at how this scenario changes over time uh, as the markets fluctuate. So let's say this supply chain were established in January. The C price is $1.15 and our differential is fixed at 40 cents. So we have an FOB price of $1.15. 55 cents per pound. Now at that time, let's say the exchange rate, COP Colombian pesos per USD is 3,000. In that case, we'll have COP 4,650 pesos per pound. If this is the case in this type of supply chain, let's say 80% uh, of the FOB price is being paid to the farmer, producer, per kilo parchment will be 6,397 pesos. The production cost is fixed at 6,000 pesos per kilo. So the producer in this case is going to be profiting 397 pesos per kilo of dry parchment sold into the supply chain. So that, that is what it is. Let's take a look at how this might change should the conditions fluctuate agreement with the importer held constant at plus 40 differential. So let's say in April of the same year, the C price has then fallen from $1.15 to $1.10. The differential is still plus 40. So our FOB price in this case will be $1.50. FOB absolute price has fallen. However, the Colombian peso has also depreciated in relation to the US dollar. Therefore, it takes more Colombian pesos to buy one US dollar. If we're being paid as Colombians in US dollars, those dollars are now worth more Colombian pesos to us. 3,500 Colombian pesos per one US dollar. So in that case, this USD FOB price translates to 5,225 pesos per pound, which then translates to by the calculation we mentioned uh, a moment ago to 7,188 Colombian pesos per kilo parchment. Much better for the farmer, right? They're earning more Colombian pesos per kilo of dry parchment than they were before. Even though the seed price fell, the Colombian peso was also depreciated. So in this case, the farmer is not going to be making 397 Colombian pesos per kilo, rather 1,188 Colombian pesos per kilo. They're much better off uh, even though the C price has fallen and the absolute uh, dollar denominator for B price has fallen. What the roaster in another part of the world has to pay, supposing they use US dollars, has fallen. Even still, the farmer is making more. Let's take a look at a third case. Say in August of that same year, that same agreement with the importer is in place plus 40 differential, but now the C price is at $1.05. It fell another 5 cents, plus 40, then our FOB price is 145. Now we need to translate this into Colombian pesos, but now the Colombian peso has appreciated with respect to the US dollar. Now it only takes 2,800 Colombian pesos to buy one US dollar. In that case, uh, because our FOB price is denominated in US dollars, our income here in Colombia is less than before. It's only 4,060 pesos. If this is the case, 
the amount that corresponds to the farmer is 5,585 pesos. And with a fixed production cost of 6,000 pesos, now the farmer is in the red. Every kilo of dry parchment sold, they're losing 415 Colombian pesos. And these are invented scenarios to show you how a changing market can have different implications on farmers, but these fluctuations aren't outlandish. Uh, the Colombian peso in the last month has gone from uh, about 3,400 up to 4,200, 4, now back down to 3,800. Uh, the sea price has been quite volatile over the past few years. So as you can see, uh, depending on these markets, uh, one is, is quite vulnerable to these shifts. If you're just finding out about Cedro Arte through these videos, you should probably know that as a farmer's collective, our main objective is to sell the green coffees produced by our members to roasters in other parts of the world that appreciate these coffees and are willing to compensate farmers for their efforts. Right now, we have spot coffees in the US, the UK, Australia, and New Zealand. And depending on quantity, we can deliver anywhere in the world. If you're interested in sourcing coffees through our collective group and partnering with one or more producers, feel free to reach out to me directly. My contact information is in the description of this video. I hope you've enjoyed our third video on transparency in the coffee supply chain. This one was about currencies and exchange rates. The next one will be about exchange rate risks and vulnerability to fluctuations in the relative values of currencies in the coffee supply chain. If you find this information useful and would like to be in the loop as future videos are coming out on these topics, please go ahead and subscribe. And if this has brought up any additional questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll try to get to them in other videos. Thank you.